Before I start my khutbah, boys, I want you to sit over here so I can see you. You too. I, mean, I know many of us aren't attending Jum'ah in Masajid, but when you do and you attend Jum'ah with your children, then it's important that you make sure that they're not leaning on a wall and they're not sitting on the side. They're sitting right in front and they are sitting respectfully. A lot of times parents let their kids be bunched up together in, in the masjid. And so the parents are attending and the kids are, it's okay for them to be distracted and be talking to each other and things like that. We expect the highest manners from our kids. They can goof around all they want. But once the adhan is given, we have to set certain guidelines. And those guidelines are once the adhan is given, all the conversations about video games, playing, all the conversations about school, friends, you know, what, what fight you watched, you know, what movie you watched, what, all of that, it's gone. All of that disappears. Once the adhan happens, then there's no difference between you and an adult inside the masjid. Like, this is Allah's time. And you have to respect that. And part of that is you have to make the most of every moment you're here. You're not there to relax. You're in the presence, not of the khatib. You're not in the presence of the imam. You're in the presence of Allah. And you came to Allah's house. And Allah invited you. And the adhan actually means, part of what it means, Allahu Akbar, is Allah is a greater priority than everything else. And once that announcement is made, you acknowledge that and you repeat it after the Mu'addin. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. Part of the meaning is greater than everything else I was doing. Greater than anything on my phone. Greater than any conversation I was having. Greater than any joke. Greater than everything else. So that means that we have to... I'm taking time to say that because I want the kids that are listening to know the next time you go to a masjid, inshallah this crisis is over and we're going to resume our life back inside the masajid and we're going to go back and be able to spend time in Allah's house. When you go to the masjid, it doesn't matter which prayer it is. Before the prayer, you want to goof off with your friends? Totally cool. Once the adhan is given, then it's Allah's time. And you have to have the highest form of discipline. By the way, the prayer, the Muslim prayer, is perfect rows, isn't it? And all the movements are completely synchronized. Everybody's completely synchronized, moving at the same exact time. Where else in the world do you see that kind of organization? You see that kind of organization in the military. Right? In the military, soldiers march in unison, they take steps in unison, they stop in unison, they move in unison, they speak in unison, isn't it? Because the military is considered the highest form of organization. And in the military, there's a chain of command. And the chain of command is the general, the commander, whoever it is. He speaks and the soldiers immediately follow. There's no room for conversation or anything else, right? Everybody lines up. When the commander's there, everybody lines up and everybody's disciplined, right? Because they, they teach you something in the military about chain of command and discipline. And nobody's messing around when time comes for that, okay? Because to them, that's a matter of life and death when the actual battlefield comes. So no military in the world will have loose discipline because that's the same as death. And if they understand chain of command from a commander, a general, a captain, whoever, on our side, in Islam, the chain of command is Allah Himself. Allah just said, line up. Allah just said, come and drop everything, right? So we have to demonstrate that when we are in, in His house and we are in His presence at that time.